That's why last uh, Sunday, he sent his servant, Pastor Colin Williams, to share with us uh, this message of faith under the title, what which is the title? Overcoming the Seasons of Life. This was the title. So the Lord reminded us that we need to have faith in God. Because when we have faith in God, whether it is in season or out of the season, He is the God of impossible. He will make things happen for us. So, trusting God, turning to God is for our own benefit. Because He is omnipotent. Not meaning nothing is too difficult for Him. So he can make things happen for us even out of the season. So today we are going to build a message from there. And the title of our message today is Focus on God, not on problems. Can you tell your, your neighbor? Focus on God, not on problems. Again, focus on God. I started this message by reminding you that uh, God is God, uh, good all the time, all the time God is good. Because initially I was preparing another message, but in the beginning of this month, the Lord just gave me this message to share with you. That's why today I feel really blessed to share this important lesson he taught me personally in the last quarter of 2016. And in January 2017, it was testing time for me to put into practice this important lesson. I will share with you the details of this experience in my testimony when I will conclude this study. And with the Lord's help, I applied it in my situation, and there was a happy ending. That's why with confidence I can tell you that it works. Amen. Say amen if you agree with me. Amen. For those who are unsure up to now, who do not uh, agree with me yet, they will change their mind at the end of the message. Amen. amen. This is my confidence. I'm confident that the Lord gave me this message because he wants to prepare you and me to face a, a challenge coming ahead. The purpose of this study is to equip you to activate your faith in God and understand the basis of the power of positive prayer. The power of positive prayer. And this will change your approach to prayer as your faith in God will continue to grow stronger. Because this year, 2019, it's the year of Jubilee. Amen. It's the year of the grace of the Lord. And I can tell you that things will not be the same again. Amen. God will wipe away your tears. Amen. He will put back smile on your face. Listen carefully. What we focus on is made bigger. In fact, we don't change its size, but it simply becomes bigger in our mind. If you stay focused on your problem, your negative medical report or a negative comment somebody made about you, it will make it bigger than it really is and will affect your perspective about you about yourself and about your situation. The enemy will use a magnifying glass to make bigger what is negative and to make smaller what is positive. If you understand the strategy of the enemy, then you will not fall again into his trap. Do you think that God does not know your problem? Your situation? You need. If this is the case, it means that you don't know that God is 
omnipotent. Meaning, nothing is too difficult for you. For him, you do know that he's omniscient. Meaning, that he knows everything. He knows everything. Brothers and sisters, focus on God, not on problems. In fact, I just gave you the summary of, <laughs> of my message. Now let us dig deeper so that our lesson may be engraved in our mind and help us in our new testimony. Everyone will get his testimony this year. A new testimony. It's not about the past. A new testimony this year. That's why you need to be prepared for it. I repeat, it will happen this year and there will be no delay. We are going to learn from the example of Abraham. How he applied this important lesson in his life and what happened to him as a result. This approach will help us to distinguish people of faith from those who are faithless. The example of Abraham, father of faith. Abraham's story is recorded from Genesis chapter 11 uh, with the story of his family and he died in chapter 26. We will try to identify chapters and verses which are relevant to our study. Abraham was a man just like you and me. He had his ups and downs like you and me. He had his struggles. He had his crisis in his life just like you and me. But in all this, Abraham kept God's laws in his heart. Please note that uh, Abraham lived before God gives the Ten Commandments to Moses. But he was still keeping God's laws in his heart. He was living a life of, a life of faith, a life of obedience to God. That's why God chose him. We want to learn from his good example to improve our Christian life. Do you like that? All his life, his focus was on God rather than on problems or circumstances. He wanted to fool. That is why Abraham, a man just like you and me, became special, so special in God's sight. Is the only man God is calling his friend. The first time I read about it, I, I was shocked. God is calling a human like you and me his friend. If you are sure, refer to Isaiah 41, verse 8. It's where God is saying it. So, God had no doubt about Abraham's faith in him. Abraham trusted God completely in everything without asking questions. Later, he became the father of the Jewish people. He's also the father of those who have faith, those who are born again of the water and of the spirit. This is what makes us descendants of Abraham through our faith in Jesus Christ, his descendants. Abraham's descendant. Now, let's start by chapter 12. His journey with God started in chapter 12 when God called him. Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord said, Ed said to Abraham, Go from your country your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. So when God called him, he had to leave his family. But he had to leave his family in a very critical time. 
His father, Terah, just died at the end of chapter 11. So after his father died, God is asking him to leave his family. He left his friends, his lifestyle, and he didn't know where he was going. God told him early, to the land I will show you. But he trusted God completely and took this leap of faith to the unknown. Abraham obeyed God and focused on God alone, not on his family, his friends, or his lifestyle. When Abraham left, his nephew, Lord, followed him. Because, by the way, Lord lost his father. His father was the youngest brother of Abraham. He died. So Abraham was in charge, taking care of his nephew. That's why when he left, it was normal for the nephew to follow him. But it wasn't God's plan. Because God said that he needs to leave his family. Lot was still family. But, and then, that's why in chapter 13, there was disagreement. They had to go separate ways. So, you see, in verse chapter 12, we see Abraham's faith. God is asking him to go to the unknown. He trusts God. He accepts it. So now they went, went separate ways. Trusting God, he asked the Lord to choose where he, what he wants. If you go left, I go right. Because he still trusted God. And then Lord with his eyes saw the beauty there with his eyes. This is what he chose. And then what he didn't choose, this is what most, uh, Abraham took. And it was exactly the land God promised him. You see, we need to trust God. You see, in Genesis chapter 14, he didn't know where he went. He didn't know the danger. He wanted to live in Sodom. And then four kings came to, to conquer Sodom and they captured Lot and his family, and his, all his possession. So when someone, one of the servants, escaped and brought the, the news to Abraham, what was his reaction? He reacted straight away. He gathered 380 men, trained men from his household, to go and fight back. You can do it only if you trust God really. Because when we are talking about the four kings, it means that four different armies of four different countries. So he took the step of facing them with 380 men. What is the lesson here? When you focus on God, like Abraham did, God is so big that you don't see any danger. God is so big that he didn't see any danger. He reacted, he went and he defeated them and he, he, he liberated his, 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 his nephew and he recovered everything. The Bible doesn't tell us that Abraham prayed. But focusing on God is what Christianity is all about. And Christianity is a lifestyle. Focus on God is something you need, do not need to do from time to time. You need to focus on God all the time to benefit from it. Not whenever, only when it suits you, no. Can you imagine the risk it took? 
with 318 people. It's, it's, it's not very different from uh, uh, deciding to commit suicide. But with God, nothing is too difficult. And God gave him the victory. In chapter 15, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Genesis 15, 1 to 6. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. Why? Because we see, if you don't have children, then your servant you trust the, the most will inherit your possession. And Abraham said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir, according to the, the traditions. So Abraham accepted the reward, but he, he is telling God the truth. Yes, whatever wealth you will give me, so I have no, no heirs for my own blood to inherit. So when you are telling God the truth, you are not sinning. This is what you need to learn. In your prayer, you need to be honest and uh, sincere with God. When you, you fear, you tell him, oh, Lord, I am afraid. You are not sinning. You are telling him the truth because effectively you are afraid. I am afraid, give me the strength. Then, verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. This is God's saying. This is God's promise. He took him outside and said, Look up, at the sky and count the stars, in, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse 6, Abram believed the Lord and he credited him to it, and he credited to him as righteousness. You see, this was God's promise to Abram. It was just a reminder of the promise he already gave him in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, when he promised that I will make you a great nation. We need to know that we cannot please God with our own efforts. We can't. We can please God only if we trust him. And Paul repeats, this verse 6 in Galatians chapter 3 verse 6 and Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 explains how Abraham trusted God Hebrews 11 8, verse 8 by faith Abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. About trusting God, what Hebrews 11, 6 is telling us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can please God only if you show him that you have faith in him. This is what it means. In chapter 17, God changed their names. In verse 5, he changed Abraham to Hebrew, 
and then Sarai to Sarah. He changed their names in chapter 17. Then we move to chapter 21, the birth of Isaac. God had promised a son to Abraham, but Sarah, his wife, thought that he, she was too old to have a baby. So she suggested that Abraham should have a baby with Agar, an Egyptian slave. Sarai's idea seemed to be a natural solution to Abraham's problem, but it wasn't God's solution. God wanted Abraham to continue to trust him, and Sarah would be the mother of the son he promised him. And the birth of uh, Ishmael didn't change this plan. That's why you need to make sure that you know God's plan. Because what you know, you stick on it because this is what will happen. Ishmael was already 13 years old and Sarah still had no child. That emphasizes how wonderful the birth of Isaac would be. It couldn't happen the usual way. She was old. <coughs> but only God can make it happen. <coughs> and the birth of Isaac changed everything for Ishmael. Ishmael was merely the son of a slave. He knew that he would never be as important as Isaac. So Ishmael was cruel to Isaac. Abraham had sent, had to send Ishmael in away with his mom. It was painful. But God told Abraham. Don't worry, I will make Ishmael successful. And Abraham, you have to look after Isaac, the son of the promise. Let's read Genesis 21. It was a very difficult situation. 21. From verse 12, 12 to 13. 12, yeah, 12 to 13. 12, from verse 12. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham, was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter, verse 11, the matter distressed Abraham. No, no, no. I started from verse 8. Uh, from verse 8. And now I am at 11. I'm sorry. I started at 8. Uh, 11 now. This, the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. It was a difficult time. He will, Ishmael was his son, but because 
His wife didn't ask him to send away. God took side. And then, uh, if we try to refer to the Bible, we may realize that uh, usually God takes the sides of the ladies. That's why we need to be careful. And we need to be careful, you see? What uh, the wife asked was difficult. But God took side and said, no, man, you need to follow you. Yeah? So, you need to be careful. That's why now we are in chapter 22. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. Then it became even more difficult. For me, for two reasons. And I'm confident that you will agree with me. The first reason, so it was just a, God asked him to send away Ishmael, his son. Ishmael was gone. Now he got Isaac, the son of the promise. And then God is asking him to sacrifice Isaac. It was difficult. Second, God asked him to sacrifice the son of the promise, the one, the only one remaining. So he certainly wondered how God could ask him such a thing, because his promise to make him a great nation, to give him many descendants, is through Isaac. How can God ask me to sacrifice him? Is it a kind of mistake from God? <coughs> Certainly not, because be assured that God never makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Never. But he obeyed God and came through this test victorious. But did you ever wonder why Abraham kept his wife in the dark about this request from God? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Just imagine. Just imagine. He, he kept his wife in the dark. He took the child. No, no, we are coming. Yeah? Uh, they went. He was going to sacrifice the son without telling his wife. Why? Did you ever wonder why? Huh? <laughs> you see, I just mentioned a few, uh, some times ago that God is taking the uh, lady's side. So, it, for me, this is a, it was a personal test. So, he didn't have to share with his wife. If he did, just imagine the tr trouble Sarah would have caused. It, it, she can't let it happen. Over my dead boy, my, my son I had at a old age, when all hope is gone and you, you are playing, trying to play games. Can you tell me that you hear God? God, can you ask you such a thing? You see, so that's why you need to make sure, when you are sure that God is speaking to you, Don't tell your wife, yeah? <laughs> Maybe it's, it's not a causing division. It's a wisdom. <laughs> because to avoid the trouble, because by doing so, uh, maybe you, 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 you didn't have a discretion. How, how do you call it? It's yeah. Yeah, you didn't respect the confidentiality. <laughs> is it a matter of confidentiality? So this is not uh, how put the point today. It, if you want to talk about it, uh, other people remember it, it takes time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Abraham did not know why God was testing him. He didn't know. But he could recognize God's voice because he developed this personal relationship with God. Christians too should be able to recognize 
when God is guiding them to do something or when he is answering their request. But God has also provided other methods to guide Christians today. But one thing is sure, listening to God is a learning process. It doesn't come overnight. It takes time. If you didn't start yet, you need to start because it takes time. And during this learning process, you will be making mistakes. Don't worry about it. It's part of the learning process. So when we read the Bible, we need to keep in mind that God will never require of us to do anything that is in contradiction with his instructions in the Bible. And God has also provided church leaders to help us in our discernment. They are not always right, but we should listen carefully to their advice and seek confirmation from God. So, God telling you to do something contrary to his instruction, it's unusual. For this kind of situation, you need to pray twice. You need confirmation. Because it may come from the enemy to mislead you. You think you are doing God's will while you are hearing the voice of the enemy. That's why the first reaction, if it's, it's against God's instruction in the Bible, you need to stand. Take time to discern. We might wonder why God wanted Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Because the Bible teaches us that you should not murder. The answer is that God never wanted Abraham to kill Isaac. <coughs> now listen to what happened to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, here, verse 1, verse 4. Verse 4. On the third day, Abram looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here, listen, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. But listen to this. We will worship and then we will come back to you. How does he know that? We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham did not know about God's plan to save Isaac, but he told his servants that he would bring his Isaac back. He will come back. Verse 6. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke out and said to his father, I don't understand what's going on. Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Listen to Abraham's answer. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Abraham didn't know God's plan to save Isaac, but did you follow his answers? It's like he, he understood the mind of God. Because what he was saying, this is what happened. Verse 9, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. I don't like to think of this picture. And 
uh, sometimes I, I, I wondered what was the relationship afterwards when the son will remember that you were about to kill him. But we leave it to God, yeah? <laughs> then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him, called out, of, out to him from heaven. Abram, Abram, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now listen to this. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. God stopped Abraham before he could hurt Isaac because God had a different plan. Well, God was not really asking Abraham to kill Isaac. In fact, God was asking Abraham to prove that he would completely trust him. His faith was tested to the limit, and his successful outcome made him the father of faith. Brothers and sisters, we are lucky. We didn't live in the Bible times. We are lucky. We have the Bible. To learn from their mistakes we can avoid and what they did good to learn from. This is our benefit. Brothers and sisters, focus on God, not on? Focus on God, not? So what was Abraham's attitude? During his whole life, Abraham was learning to trust God more and more. So in his answer in chapter 22, it seemed like Abraham understood the mind of God. But this comes only as a result of a close relationship with God. You need to develop this closeness with God to be able to understand him, to understand his mind. When he's speaking to you, you will have no mistake, you know, no, 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 this is what is God is expecting from me. This is what we need to do. So, at the end of the day, God provided the needed sacrifice. Abraham did not focus on problems, but on God to whom nothing is too difficult. As he stood in faith, his faith activated God's power in his body to enable him to remain obedient to God. Amen. Obedient to the very end. It is important for us to follow the example of Abraham, our forefather, the father of faith, and not to focus on our negative circumstances on our negative medical report. Abraham was consistent in his attitude. His focus was on God alone, the author and finisher of his faith, not on problems. His focus was on God, not on his age. He was about 100 years old. Not on his wife's dead womb. His faith in God enabled him to have Isaac. His focus was on God, not on what will happen to Ishmael and Agar when he sent them away. And God, in his faithfulness, took care of uh, Ishmael and blessed him as a great nation. His focus was on God, not on the prospect of facing four kings, meaning four different armies of four different countries with 318 trained men, God gave him the victory. His focus was on God, not on the idea of losing the son of the promise. God saw his faith. At this point, he had no doubt about his faith. And God provided a substitute. 
The point I would like to make here in this message, this lesson the Lord taught me is simple. Stop focusing on your problem and start focusing on God. Can you repeat? Start focusing on your problem. One more time. Yeah. yeah. Remember that you are the child of the Most High God. This God who is the creator of the whole universe. What does that mean in practice? When facing a problem, instead of complaining in your prayer, start reminding God who he is and what he promised. Remind him about general promises available to all believers. We call logos, what he promised in the Bible. And especially personal promises to you in response to your prayer. When you pray, it's not finished. You need to, to listen for God to answer you. Because we can pray for the same request, but He got different plans for us. It's not because for me, he said that do this, and then you take it as a, as a principle to apply it in, in your case. It doesn't work like this. Because when you come to me, I will explain it to you what God did for me. But for you, you need to pray so that God make it clear to you what he wants to do for you and what he is expecting from you. This is the, the problem. This will lead you to understand and practice the power of positive prayer, which is based on a positive confession of the word of God. When you hear the power of positive prayer, don't be frightened. It simply means that it is based on you are confessing the word of God. Confessing you co positive confession. You don't focus on what is negative. There are other people who had the opportunity to, to, to discuss with me. I told them my, where I'm standing. This is the, the level the Lord is taking us. You do not pray to complain. Oh Lord, I do not understand. Everybody is against me. Everybody, everything is going wrong. This is not a prayer as the Lord taught me in this lesson. He said, no. What you are saying, I know about it. But what do you want? What do you want? This is what is important. What do you want? And what do you expect from me? Because the, it's based on co positive confession. You are going, going there. The Bible is the word of God. It is powerful and life-changing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 tells us that all scriptures, all scriptures is God brief, which means inspired by God. With this promise of God in hand, we can be assured that what we learn in the Bible comes from Him and inspired by Him. You need to change your prayer. Instead of telling God how big your problem is, the problem you are facing, how big and strong your enemies are. Change your prayer and start reminding God, God how great He is and about great wonders He performed in the past. Try to pay attention. When you are reading the Bible, try to pay attention. Before God makes a promise, He used to remind the people what He did in the past. I took you out of Egypt from slavery. I am the one who did it. So now this is what I want to do for you. He used to remind. So this is what pleases God. From now on, stop focusing on your problem 
for circumstances and start focusing on God. What does that mean? Focus on who God is. You see, I break it down in four parts. Focusing on God on four parts. For who he is, what he said about you, what he did in the past, and what he promised you. So, let's take, focus on who God is means that you acknowledge his lordship in your life. You tell him all his attributes, you know. It will be an evidence that to prove that you, you know who he is. You tell him you are all powerful. The whole creation is under your divine control. I thank you because you are El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. You are El Elyon. You are all powerful. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is. You are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. You are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. You are Jehovah Jaira, the Lord will provide. You are Jehovah Shalom, Lord send peace. Oh, Lord, you are, you, you are Jehovah Chitkenu, the Lord our righteousness. You love justice and you are known for your acts of justice. You see, this is telling God who he is. This is what he lacks. You created heaven and earth. You created, the, you created us in your own image and likeness. The heavens declare your glory and the skies proclaim the work of your hands. This is what God likes. Then focus on what God said about you means that you trust him as your creator. And don't pay attention to the lies of the enemy and his servants who are around us. You will never hear a word of encouragement from them. Just remember what God said about you and say it back to him because you believe in him. You believe that his, his, his word is truth. I am a masterpiece, an handy work. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I certainly have the right look and the right personality. You don't regret other people to tell you. You are confident. And you need to be confident. This is what God says that you are. This is who you are. He's your creator. Trust him. Focus on what God has already done for you in the past means that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It may delay, but we will be fulfilled in his time. Your thanksgiving will show him clearly that you have a grateful heart. And this pleases God. This is the way you sh will show him that you, have, you are grateful. And God loves people with a grateful heart. Amen. Remember the story of the ten lepers yeah. and one came back. You see, this is the example we need to follow. Oh Lord, you parted the Red Sea in two in order to allow your people to cross on dry land and the wedding in Canaan. Uh, you, you turned one into uh, water into one. On your command, the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation uh, led by uh, Joshua avenged itself on its enemies. You rescued Daniel in the den of hungry lions Amen. with five loaves of bread and two fish, you fed 5,000 people. Amen. What can't you do for me? Focus on what God has promised means that you understand that his promise is yes and amen. It may delay, but it will be fulfilled in his time. The time he has set in his own authority. If you are sick, now let's talk about it. If you are sick, do not focus on your doctor's negative report. What is
he's telling you is according to what he studied. When he was trained as a doctor, this is what they taught him. But if you do a search on the internet, you will find 43 negative effects of your sickness, 27 ways to die, to die from it. And if you ask a, a cousin, he will tell you that uh, 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 one of his friends died, died of it after 48 years. And then you speak to a, a neighbor, he said, that, oh, my wife died there only after two hours. Do you think all this is helpful to you? But there is a way out. It will become a different story if you focus on God who created you. Just remember the story of Lazarus. He died. It was too late beyond any understanding. Bad order start coming up to the tomb. The decomposition of the body started. But at the Lord's command, every cell in his body was renewed and he was brought back to, to life. When you focus on God and on his promise, faith, hope, expectancy will rise up. This will set the basis of the power of positive prayer. Those who reach this level in their life of prayer are confident because their focus is on God. And this kind of people, how can you identify them? In their prayer, you will hear them say that I pray and decree. Ah, if someone is praying this way, you know that he reached this level. I pray and decree. Is exercising this power and authority given to him as child of God. We have this power and authority to use. But you need to be confident about it. If you are not confident, it means that you do not trust God enough. This is what it means. Because when he taught me, I will come to it, at some point you you may start thinking, if you want to use your mind to think as human, fear may come. If, and then he reminded me, if you have fear, it means that you don't trust me enough. It's when I, I have to, to put myself back together and carry on to trust him, because this is what he wants. I pray and decree. This is the prayer. As you are exercising your authority, you pray and decree what you want to happen according to the word of God. You are praying for healing. I pray and decree the healing of the body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray and decree. And when you are saying it, you believe in what you are saying. If you don't believe, they are only words. But you, are, you, have to, you are speaking with confidence, expecting God to do it. Your faith, the power will come from this faith you have in your heart, people don't see. Not because from what you are saying, but the, the, your faith accompanying these words. This is the secret. So listen carefully. God never ran out of solutions and don't dare put him in a box. His move and touched by our present worship. But God does not give you what you want, but he gives you what you believe. Not what you want, 
what you really believe. It's what God will, will give you. And then, when I'm saying this, it may look simple, but it's not. Because in this exercise, listening is important. You, you do this, you command, and it's not the end of the matter. You exercise your power and authority in the name of Jesus. It's a good thing. But you need to, because God may ask you to do something. If you don't do it, nothing will happen. Very often, he may ask you to forgive someone. You forgot about it because it has been 20 years ago. But God is bringing it because he wants to test you. Do you trust me enough, my son? Forgive. That's why you can hear the stories of uh, people meet, meeting, living. With the neighbor, with the neighbor, the person who murdered his son. Her son, it was the case of the lady. You remember it was a family conference. Yeah. You see, the person who murdered your your son becomes your neighbor, your neighbor. Next door neighbor. Next door. And then you need to show love. You can do it only if you focus on God, not on the situation. Does it make sense? Yes. So you need to listen to what God is telling you. And then the real challenge is that do not fear. But about how, don't bother about how God will do it. This is not your business. If you start thinking of ways of finding a solution in the situation is where you will fail. It means that you don't trust God enough. That's why you are you, you making your plans. If there is a plan, wait for him to tell you what is the plan. Then you follow the plan. The challenge is do not fear. Because if fear comes, you let fear come to you it means that you do not trust God enough. So now I'm going to close with the testimony I promised. So it was at the end of uh, 2016 when the Lord taught me the lesson. And in January, our children, they are grown up, they decided to leave home. We were living in a three bedroom house. So, as the, the two, they left, so they left us with a shortfall of 400 a month. How can we pay? It's when the Lord reminded me about it. I said, do not worry. If you, are, you, you fear who you are worried, it means that you don't trust me enough. So it was a real challenge. So you need to pray and then leave it to God. Let me tell you, it is easy said than done. Eh? Yes. Uh -huh. 400 a month to cover. And then we stayed. And in his God, it's when the Lord spoke to me about, uh, he reminded me what we spoke to uh, Sister Arpea has suggested me to become a foster care. And then the same idea was with my wife. We didn't share as we keep. We were pray, praying together, but not sharing, but we were exploring to avoid to interfere, to influence each other. Then before we share, we put everything together. Then the Lord reminded me because it it, uh, we spoke about it was in uh, August. Now, six months later, it came. It is poor time, it was, there was no need. 
we didn't have a prior place. And then the Lord brought it back to my mind. So you can post it. I said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then my wife also was praying. The Lord told her the same thing. So I started it, I started to contact the, the local authority, our local authority. And then I made the arrangements. I was asking just for general information. After I called, I called just to inquire. I said, no, he, 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 he give you an appointment. He's coming to visit us. And then, so I had now to share with my wife. I said, no, I don't know. I was, uh, as I was praying, this is the way the Lord led me. And then uh, I called the local authority. They are, they are coming to visit us. They gave an appointment. They <laughs> said, yeah. As I was praying, the Lord also led, led me to foster him. But the, it led her to contact the, uh, the agency, uh, an agency. So and we started with my visit. They came, and then they invited us for training. We went for training. In fact, it wasn't a training, because at the end, they said that, ah, no, you are not. Uh, you." Uh, you are not suitable because uh, you didn't have a challenging children. <laughs> I said no. We saw we 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 are parents. We can learn, uh, but uh, we accept it as uh, it didn't go well. We turn to the agency contact. It's where we are. <laughs> when we turn there, uh, and as a result. We received help to cover for the second room as foster care. So it brought down all the fears. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the way the Lord provided. Mm -hmm. He provided it. Then when you start, as, so as when you start the training, so they, they start helping you for the second room. So we had early to deal with only one room. So this is what the, the, the Lord, the, what the Lord did, and then we moved. In 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 May, we had a shortfall of four hundred. So how to manage? Because we started in in, in March, and was just, there was a delay. So what to do? And then it's why I, I I was telling you that it works. Focus on God, not on problems. This is what we continue to do. So what we do to we focus on you. This is what you, are, you, you taught us. You are doing well up now. We know that you, what you started, you will bring it to completion because of your own faithfulness. And what happened? A church invited me. They invited me. The pastor would travel. He was traveling for two weeks. So they invited me to cover. So what they paid us, they paid, they gave me a dinner, they decided to give you 500 pounds. 500 enough. We pay, put 50 pounds for tithe and 50 pounds for, for petrol and then 400 pounds to cover the shortfall. So, and then you see, and in this situation, uh, even our children didn't know what was, was, will happen. And then they realized that we, 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 in the beginning, we told them that we are moving out uh, at the end of January. But at the end of June, we were still there. And no area in our rent. And then we were still there. One year later, we were still there. So this is what the Lord wanted me to share with you. Can you stand up, please? Change the way you pray. Focus on, this is the power of positive prayer. No more complaining in your prayer. If you are praying with me, you start complaining, I will stop you. And then this is not the way. 
It's just complaining, and so what? You need to understand that we have power and authority in the name of Jesus, and we need to exercise it. Angels are around us. They are waiting for our command to do what we want. So exercise this power and authority. What is your relationship with God? You need to develop this relationship so that you may be confident. You are going to pray for yourself before I close. Lord, help me. I understand, I know now for sure that I need to focus on you. And you can help me to do it. Because if I focus on you, you are so big, you are so great, that I will not see any danger. You are so good, you are so great, that nothing can go wrong. Because you are the creator of the whole universe. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the word you gave me to share with your people. I pray for your Holy Spirit to engrave it in their, in their minds so that they may remember only you can enable them to put it into practice so that everyone may receive his testimony this year in the name of Jesus. In the name of Lord, I thank you for this word you gave me to share with your people. You know every one of them by name. You know the, the challenge coming their way. I recommend everyone into your audience, Lord. With confidence, Lord, I, I know that this year things will not be the same again. Wipe away the tears of your children, Lord and put back smile on their faces. This year, it's the year of Jubilee, the year of the grace of the Lord, the year everyone will be sharing a new testimony. It's not about what happened last year, but what is happening this year, 2019. It's where I'm standing, Lord. I'm standing also for my, also my personal testimony for this year. We are talking in the presence, Lord. And we know that nothing is too different for you. We thank you very much, Lord. Help us in our weaknesses. Help us in our weaknesses, Lord. Help us to focus on you alone, the author and finish of our faith. We thank you. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.